Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Will Patterson, again with another Illustrated CC tutorial. And today I'm going to be showing you how you can create your own vintage text or type straight in Illustrator, no drawings, and to get all these details with relative ease. It's going to be really fun to watch, so check it out. This live stream is sponsored by Dotspace Domains. Dotspace is a domain registration website where you can get your own creative domain. If you click the link in the description below, you can get a discount off the Dotspace domain for very cheap. I use one for my website personally and they look great on a portfolio. So if you would like your very own customized Dotspace, just like mine at willpatterson.space, then click the link in the description below and enjoy the live stream. So the first thing we're gonna do is open up a blank document and I'm gonna press L to get my ellipse out and I'm just gonna create a weird sort of circle. This is easier than the pen tool, obviously. And this should have a white fill and a black stroke to it just there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy and paste this. So press Command C and then Command F and Command F pastes it in front. And what we're gonna do is hold Option Alt and just drag these inside like so to about here and drag this to about there. So we get this sort of serif O and if you're not happy with it, you can just drag it in a bit more, but make sure you hold Alt so it constrains the other ang angle of the O to move in as well. The next thing is highlight everything and go to Pathfinder and minus front. And you can see there, we've got an actual serif O which is pretty cool that it could be made like that. The next thing we're going to do is going to start adding the details in the center. Now this is really fun and easy to do. So we'll just highlight this, go to object and we're going to go to path and we're going to go to offset path. I'm going to press preview on this dialog box right here. And you can see when I press minus two, the line moves in and it cuts off right here. But if I press two, it will move out. So what we're going to do is press minus two and we're going to say okay to that. We're then going to go ahead and press object and do the same thing. We're going to offset this path again to minus, probably minus three this time. Or even no, minus two will do for there. So we've got another minus two, then we do it one more time, offset path, and then we're going to go try it for minus three this time. And we're going to see how this looks. I'm going to press OK. Then I'm going to press Command C. And you can see here we've got a bunch of different sort of O's inside of this. Now we can even just change the colors of these if you wanted to, just to see how we're going with this. So we can just create things a bit lighter every time if we wanted to, which might be a cool experience for you to see. And as you can see there, we've got a bit of lighter tones to this all the way through. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my line tool and just bring this out, draw a straight line, a little horizontal line. I'm gonna hold Alt and press Shift and drag it down and that's gonna copy it. I'm gonna go to Object, go down to Blend and then we're gonna go to Blend Options. And in here, you wanna go to Specific Steps or Specified Steps and type 60. And what it's gonna do is it's going to make this blend look good. I'm going to go to blend and make and it's going to basically make 60 steps of these lines which is what we want. Go ahead and press A or go to your direct selection tool and click the top line and then we're going to go to our uh, stroke value which should be if I can't find it it should be down here somewhere. Go to your stroke values and just bump it down and as you can see it doesn't bump down the whole of the strokes of every one but it actually gradients the strokes thickness throughout the blend what we're going to do next is highlight this press right or right click even and arrange and center back and we're going to create a clipping mask out of this but first i'm going to create a new artboard and copy it because i might want to use this again afterwards so i'm going to copy that blend like so I'm going to go and click the innermost shape here and that's going to click both of them and they're a compound shape and we're going to highlight the blend as well. Right click and we're going to make a clipping mask and what's going to happen there is you're going to see that the actual shape or the clipping mask has worked just there but we have forgotten a step and that step is to copy the innermost one then select them, make a clipping mask then press command F and we're going to get rid of that so you can see what's in there. Or we can actually create a different 
uh, color, send it backwards like so, and we get this sort of shape going on here. Now, what the cool thing about doing this is that we can do this for multiple different things or multiple actions inside this shape. So I could easily just click on this one or even the one here, press command C, and we're gonna copy that, highlight this as well, and we're gonna make a clip mask out of that too, command F, send it backwards, and then put a lighter shape on the background of it, like so. And you can see we're getting some really nice text effect just there, and that is basically how you do it. Now there's other things you can do with this. You can actually create this whole thing in a few minutes, but I showed you the easiest way of doing it. Simply because on the ones that I've been doing, I've been creating some of these little effects here in the corner, which is basically me just getting rid of the circle to add some like little, I'm not too sure, it's ornamentation with it. And you can actually add color as well and do all these cool things with it. But basically with this whole step sort of thing, you can create some really cool ornamentation and some patterns within your work. And you can change the colors however you like. If you get your library panel up, I'll just go find mine. If it's down here and you go to your colors. I've got some Christmas colors here. I could change this to be red. And I got these off the Adobe color theme website. And we can just basically go ahead. Actually, we change that to gray. We can change all these colors to do whatever we like. But some of the things that we do forget in here is actually changing the stroke values of some of these. So I'm gonna go up to the stroke value bit, which is just here. And we're gonna increase this stroke just there. And we may wanna just put this all back to gray actually as well, so you can see. I'm gonna increase the stroke here so you can see what's happening with it, like so. Increase this stroke here. If you do that though, it might go a bit funny on your Illustrator, but it's okay. But you can create loads of different patterns and awesome little things for your illustrated type. Let me know what you thought of the tutorial and whether you'd like to see any more. If you've got any trouble with tutorials or if you need something to be shown to you, then just leave it in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next video. See you soon.